We hope so. Up till this point, you will have a good idea about the basic type of the plots that can be used to see the distribution of the data. We have a one clinical data set in a form of CSV format. Now, what does it mean by the CSV? The CSV stands for the comma separated values. Now, in this format, the values that are present are separated by the commas. You can open the CSV files in the Excel as well. So let's open that CSV file. When we have opened the CSV file in an Excel, then we found the different columns in our data set. The each column is going to represent a one particular variable. For example, if you look at it here at the first column, the first column is going to represent the age of the participant. The second column is going to represent the sex of the participants, while the third column is going to represent the systolic blood pressure, while the fourth column is going to represent the diastolic blood pressure. Similarly, in a fifth column, there is a cholesterol values, while in a fifth column, there are the BMI values. In the sixth column, we are going to have an idea about the diabetic status of the participants, while in the seventh column, we are going to have an idea about the smoking status of the participants. In the next column, we have an idea about the exercise frequency of the participants, while in the last column, we have an idea about the heart rate of the participants. Now, the each column is going to represent a one variable. So, we have the age, sex, systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, cholesterol, BMI, and etc. and etc. variable in our data set. Let's assume for a moment that you want to perform some basic statistics on the different variables of this data set. So the first thing is that you need to see their distribution. And to see the distribution, we need to build the plots. So let's move to the R Studio and let's try to build the plots. So right now we are in an R Studio. As we have explained in an early tutorials, and the R Studio is going to have the four panels. But here, right now, you can see the three panels. So where is our fourth panel? To get the fourth panel, let's click here on this file and then click on the new file. And when you will click on the new file, then you will have this menu. And in this menu, click on the R script. When you will click on the R script, then this fourth panel for the scripting will appear in front of you. Now the second most important thing that you need to do is to set your working directory where your data is present. We have already explained it to you that how you can set the working directory. So let's see it here once again. To select the working directory, we will click here on these three dots, as you can see it here. And then we will click on these three dots, then we will have this window in front of us. In this window, we will go to our drive where our folder is present. So right now our folder is present in a D drive. So we will move to the D drive. And then we will search our folder where our data is present. Our data is present in test folder. So we will select the test folder and we will click here on this open. When we will click here on this open, then you can see it here that the CSV file having our clinical data will appear in front of us. The name of the file is clinical underscore dataset.csv. Now we will click here on this gear button, and when we will click here on this gear button, then we will have this drop down menu. In this drop down menu, we will click here on set as a working directory. When we will click here as set as a working directory, then look at the console. Something has happened in the console. And it means that our this folder is set as our working directory. It means that all of the input files will come from this folder and all of the output files will also be saved in the same folder. Now, in the next step, we have to read this clinical data set in our R environment. To read this data in our R environment, let's create a one variable first with the name of data. After typing the name of data, we will give the sign of equality of R. And after this, we are going to use a one function of R, and that is read.csv. 
After typing this read.csv, we will give the parentheses. The read.csv function will basically read the CSV files that are present in our working directory and will store that information in our data variable name. So let's type the name of the file within these parentheses and within this comma inverted comma. So we will type the comma inverted comma and within a comma inverted comma, we will write down the name of the file that is present in our working directory. After typing the name of the file which is present in your working directory, come out of the parentheses and hit the run button that you can see it here or you can press the control enter. When you will press the control enter or the run button, then see it here in this environment tab. You can see it here that the information of the file is now stored in our data variable. This is going to have the 100 observations and the 10 variables. The 100 observation means that there are the 100 rows and the 10 variable means that there are the 10 columns in our data set. Now before moving ahead, let's check out the structure of this data set. To check the structure of this data set, we are going to use a one function that is str. After typing the str, we will type the name of the variable that is holding our data. And as you know, and the name of the variable that is holding our data is data. After typing this, come out of the parentheses and hit the run button or press the control enter. When you will press the control enter, then look at the console. In the console, you will have the basic structure of your data set. As you can see it here that in R, this is read as a data frame. And there are 100 observations and 10 variables. And you can also see the name of all columns or the variables that is present in your data set. Along with it, you will also have an idea about the type of the data that is present in each column or the variable. For example, in each column or the variable, there is going to be a numeric data, as you can see it here, which is represented by INT. The INT stands for what? The INT stands for the integer. Where in SX, there is a data in a form of characters. The character is represented as CHR. We will talk about it a bit later that how we can use the character values for the statistical analysis. Now let's assume for a moment that first we are interested in an age column. So if you are interested in an age column or the age variable, so we are going to see its distribution. So let's first build the histogram. To build a histogram, we are going to use a one function HIST. After typing this HIST, we will give the parentheses. After typing the parentheses, we will give the name of the variable that is holding the age variable. As you know that the name of the data set is data. After typing the data, to select the age column or the variable or to specify the age column or the variable, we will type the dollar sign. When we will type the dollar sign, then you will have this drop down menu. In this drop down menu, you can select the any column or the variable. We are going to select the age. After selecting the age, come out of the parentheses and hit the run button or press the control enter. When you will press the control enter, then you can see it here that the histogram of the age is built in front of you. By looking at this histogram, we can say that the distribution of the age in our data set is almost normal. After building the histogram, now let's build the box plot. To build the box plot, we are going to use a one function that is box plot. After typing the box plot, we will give the parentheses. And after giving the parentheses, we will type the name of our data set, which is data. And after typing the name of the data set, we will give the dollar sign to specify our variable or the column. And this time, once again, we are going to select the age. After typing the age, we will come out of the parentheses and then we will hit the run button or press the control enter. When we will do that, then the box plot of our age variable will appear in front of us. As you can see it here that in this box plot that the black line is almost in the center of the box. And this is once again letting us know that the distribution of our data 
is almost normal. Now, after building the box plot, let's build the density plot. To build the density plot, we are going to use the two functions. The one is a density, another one is a plot. So let's first type the plot and then give the parenthesis. After giving the parenthesis, let's use another function which is a density. After typing the density, let's give the parenthesis once again and let's type the name of the data set which is a data and then give a dollar sign and after giving a dollar sign, let's specify the variable or the column that is holding the age data. After typing this, come out of the parenthesis and hit the run button or press the control enter key. Once you will do that, then you can see the density plot of your data. As you can see it here that the distribution of the data is almost normal. After building the density plot, let's build the final plot, which is a QQ plot. To build the QQ plot, once again, we are going to use the two function. The one is a QQ norm. After typing the QQ norm, give the parenthesis, and within the parenthesis, specify the name of the data set, which is a data, and then give a dollar sign. And after giving a dollar sign, provide the name of the variable, which is age. And let's hit the run button or press the control enter key. Once you will do that, then the QQ plot in front of you. Here in this QQ plot, you can see the dots, but there isn't any line. To build the line, we are going to use another function which is QQ line. After typing the QQ line, once again, let's repeat the same process. Let's provide the name of our data set and then give a dollar sign. And after providing the dollar sign, provide the name of the variable, which is an age. And let's hit the run button or press the control enter key. Once you will do that, then the line will also appear in your QQ plot. As you can see it here, Dad, the dots are very much aligned with your line and the line is almost diagonal. This means that the age distribution is almost normal in our data set. We hope so that now you will have a good idea that how you can build these four different type of the plots to see the distribution of the data by yourself. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you are finding any issue or the problem. We are always here to help you out. Good luck.